This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on that later. What's up everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist and I just finished building this portable Bluetooth speaker that runs on DeWalt 20 volt batteries and I even made it universal so you can use whatever battery system you want. So make sure to stick around to the very end so you can build one too. Let's get started. A few years ago I made a similar battery powered speaker out of acrylic, aluminum extrusion and 3D printed parts. Now I may be biased but I thought it turned out awesome and I actually use it all the time but it had a few minor issues that I'd like to address with this version. The main goal, like I said, is to be able to use DeWalt 20 volt batteries. I do really like having a built-in battery in the old version, but I'd like to be able to hot swap the entire battery pack since I've got a million of these. That way I can have less interruptions while I'm listening to my self-help audiobooks. You are a strong, independent woman and the true secret to happiness is all- So just like the previous speaker build, the main frame is made out of 2020 aluminum extrusion just because it's super easy to work with. It's fairly cheap and I really like the way it looks. I bought the extrusions in one meter long sections and cut them down to size on my miter saw. All the sections are the same length, so I dialed in the length with a piece of scrap wood and then used a stop block to make all the repetitive cuts. Next, I had to tap the aluminum extrusions so I could bolt them together, but you have to pay attention to what kind of extrusions you buy because they're not all gonna work for this project. I intended to buy extrusions with 4.2 millimeter end holes, which work perfectly with an M5 tap, but some, well actually most, of the extrusions available on Amazon come with five millimeter end holes that are intended for an M6 tap. Somehow I accidentally ordered that kind and I tried to make it work with the M6 bolts, but there just wasn't enough clearance for the bolt heads. So I had to reorder more aluminum extrusions with the correct size center holes and recut them all from scratch. With all the aluminum cut and the holes tapped with the correct size tap, I'm ready to assemble the main frame. But to do that, I've got a crap ton of 3D printing to do. That's not a problem for me. I've got several printers to put to work here, but if you don't have a 3D printer yet, or you wanna print a material that your printer doesn't support, then today's video sponsor PCBWay can help you out. PCBWay is a company that specializes in prototyping and small volume production, making it the perfect one-stop shop for all your DIY project needs. Using their online tool, you can upload your 3D model, select the material and color you want, and one of PCBWay's engineers will put together a quote for you and you'll receive your part in three to four business days. Now, even if you have your own 3D printer, PCBWay can still help you out as they offer many different services, including CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and as their name suggests, PCB manufacturing. All you have to do is upload your Gerber file, select your design settings, and get 10 custom PCBs for only $5. Make sure to check them out from the link in the description so you can get $5 off your first order. Huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Most of these parts can be printed without supports at all, except for one small part on the side handles and the battery mounting plate. So I just painted in some supports using Prusa Slicer and they all printed without any problems. This entire project was printed with Overture PLA. Overture is actually the filament sponsor for this video and they sent me a couple of rolls of orange PLA free of charge. But even if they hadn't, I still would have bought from them for this project because I've been using Overture filament for several years now and you just can't beat the print quality for the price. And of course, I chose orange because, well, orange is like my thing now. Plus, I gotta match my Crocs, right? Now with all the 3D printed parts done, it's time to get started cutting down the acrylic for all the sides. All the sides are gonna be cut from quarter inch acrylic sheet, and I specifically designed the speaker to be able to cut all six sides from a single sheet of 18 by 24 inch acrylic just to bring the cost of this project down. At least that was the plan. I initially ripped the acrylic into two strips of the right width, then used my crosscut sled to cut those strips down into six squares. But somewhere along the way, I didn't get the dimensions right and ended up with not quite perfect squares. Unfortunately, I didn't notice this until I had already made all the cuts on the CNC and I realized something was off. It wasn't off by much, but it was just enough to make sure that the cube was never going to fit together smoothly. So I had to cut all the panels from scratch again, but this time I cut them oversized and then I routed the entire profile on the CNC so that I was certain they were gonna be square and centered. 
Luckily, I had ordered a spare sheet of acrylic, so I didn't waste too much time, but so much for saving money by only using one sheet. I used a quarter inch O-flute carbide end mill on my 3D printed CNC, and it made super quick work of the acrylic. For the speaker cutouts and the perimeter cut, I used a 2D contour operation, and for all the bolt holes, I used a deep drilling operation to help clear out the chips as it went. I didn't bother switching bits for the bolt holes, so they are a little bit oversized, but that shouldn't be a problem, and it actually makes it easier to assemble. So in the previous design, I put the acrylic panels in the aluminum T-slot, which I really liked the look of, but I ended up getting a lot of rattling from lower frequencies, especially while listening to audiobooks. So for this design, I opted to put the acrylic on top of the aluminum so I could really bolt it down, and I covered up the ugly edges with the 3D printed parts. Unfortunately, that means I can't see as much of the aluminum extrusions, but I still think it looks pretty cool. So as this thing started coming together, I was super happy with how it was starting to look. There's definitely some improvements to be made in the way of assembly, but for now, let's talk about the electronics. The main workhorses of this speaker build, and honestly the main cost too, are these three and a half inch Dayton Audio full range drivers. I'm told they sound amazing over the full spectrum and frankly, they look pretty good too, so I had to pony up the extra dough to throw them in this build. To power these beasts, I'm using the two by 100 watt TDA 7498 Bluetooth amplifier board from Parts Express, which can run on anything from 12 volts to 30 volts, which is obviously perfect for this project. Now, like I said before, vibration was a real concern of mine, and since this isn't a ported speaker, I need to find a way for the enclosure to absorb the energy from the drivers, other than flexing and rattling the acrylic panels. To solve this problem, I opted to use a passive radiator. Passive radiators are clever little passive or unpowered diaphragm-like devices that absorb the air pressure created by the drivers, effectively allowing you to simulate a big, powerful driver. Now, I definitely won't have a perfect seal throughout the entire enclosure, but I'm hoping that it's tight enough for most of the air pressure to move through the radiator. I'll have a better description of how to calculate your passive radiator needs in the instructions for this project, and I'll also have a link down in the description if you're interested. All right, we've covered the drivers, the passive radiator, and the amplifier for this project. Now's the part you have to really pay attention to because it involves lithium ion batteries, which can be dangerous if used improperly. Now, as I understand it, these batteries don't come with any built-in low voltage protection, which means I need to add a low voltage protection module that will shut off the speaker when the battery gets below a configured voltage. If you don't use this module, the speaker will continue to pull power from the batteries 
well below their safe limits until the batteries fail and probably explode in your face. One downside of this module is that it will continue to draw a very small amount of power from the battery even after shutting off the relay. So you'll have to make sure to disconnect the battery when that happens. Now to actually mount the battery to the enclosure, I initially bought this power wheel adapter that's meant to soup up those kids sized cars so they go like 70 miles an hour. But I wanted to make this project as universal as possible and I can only find those battery adapters for a few brands like DeWalt and Milwaukee. So instead, I designed my own 3D printed version that uses some spade connectors to integrate with the battery. That way, if you have a different tool brand, all you need to do is adjust the model to fit your specific battery and you're good to go. I also added a power input jack so I could power it from a 24 volt power supply, but I hid it behind where the battery mounts so I can only do one or the other. That way, again, I won't accidentally blow up a battery in my face. Lastly, I printed out a little fake battery that I can plug into the speaker when I'm using the power supply so those two spade connectors aren't exposed. All right, that was a lot of talking, but that's it for the electronics. Now I've just got a few more finishing touches and we'll get to see how it turned out. And there you have it, folks. My DIY 3D printed DeWalt battery powered acrylic Bluetooth speaker is complete and it turned out awesome. These three and a half inch drivers combined with the passive radiator make for an absolutely booming sound quality. And all these handles, let me grab it from like any way. Actually, I may have gone overboard with the handles. Now, something I want to try including in more of my videos is a postmortem analysis to kind of talk about the parts of each project that didn't go well. So first off, I ordered the wrong extrusions, which ended up costing me both time, money, and extra filament as I tried to design around using the M6 bolts. In the end, I had to switch back to the ones with 4.2 millimeter center holes, which is unfortunate, but I should be able to find a use for the other aluminum extrusions. Next, I wasted even more money by cutting the acrylic wrong and having to use my backup sheet. Cutting the entire outline of the acrylic on my CNC ended up working perfectly until I made yet another mistake when I set the workpiece dimensions wrong and the battery mounting panel ended up about a quarter of an inch off center. It's not a huge deal, I can always recut that panel if I need to, but it's just more wasted time and money. I should also mention that assembling this thing was a real pain in the tuchus. With all the T-slot nuts and 3D printed parts and tight tolerances, it was a real headache, but in the end, I was able to figure it out, and if I can put it together, then literally anybody else should be able to, too. In retrospect, I think I could have left the acrylic edges exposed, especially since I routed them all on the CNC, and they actually ended up looking pretty good. But I do like the look of the trim pieces, so I went ahead and left them in. Otherwise, mistakes aside, this project turned out awesome. This should be a great addition to my tool set, and now I'll always have good music no matter where I'm working from. If you wanna make one of these for yourself, I'll have all the instructions linked down in the description with a full parts list, a 3D model, an electrical diagram, and assembly steps. Writing instructions for these projects takes infinitely more energy than the projects themselves, so I really appreciate you supporting this channel by purchasing them. Lastly, let me know what you thought of this project or if there's anything I should have done differently down in the comments. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.